Thank you for inviting me to speak to you by videotape. One of the great heroes of the Department of the Interior, John Wesley Powell became famous when he navigated and mapped the Colorado River. Powell, who later became one of the first directors of the U.S. Geological Survey, successfully completed this remarkable journey in 1869. But in doing so, he launched our nation on a journey of its own, a journey to discover our land, to know this great continent, its mountains, its valleys, its rivers, its shores. This journey continues today, 139 years later at this conference. Of all those who have traveled on this journey, we're perhaps the most fortunate. We live in a time when we're able to use remarkable technological advancements in geospatial technology to see our land and our planet in an extraordinary new way. The possibilities, indeed the promises, of this technological revolution are literally beyond imagining for both this generation and future generations. We continue to develop new tools that will allow us to integrate data from widely different sources to give us a clear picture of the land, how it is being used, how it is changing, how we are interacting with it, the forces at work, both human and natural, that must be sustainably managed. When he became director of the U.S. Geological Survey in 1881, John Wesley Powell hoped to complete the topographical mapping of the United States by 1900. It was a dream that he never saw fulfilled. In fact, we didn't complete the mapping of the last quadrangle of the contiguous United States until 1991. I find it startling to consider that in the computer age, we sometimes are still using the topographical mapping technology of 1900 to deal with 21st century challenges. Fortunately, this is changing. Both in the United States and internationally, we're seeking and finding new applications for our technology. Last December, I traveled to Cape Town, South Africa to head the U.S. delegation to the 2007 Ministerial Summit of the Group on Earth Observations. The Group on Earth Observations is a 73-nation partnership that President Bush helped launch four years ago. It is focused on helping countries to better share data from their weather satellites and other Earth monitoring equipment. By sharing data, we can get a better scientific picture of the forces that are shaping the Earth and respond more effectively to natural disasters ranging from floods to hurricanes to droughts. I'm sure we all remember the Big Blue Marble, the famous photograph of Earth taken from space in 1972 by the crew of Apollo 17. What a wonderful image, our beautiful blue and green planet floating alone in space, the only home our species has ever known, the place where all of human history and, so far as we know, the history of life itself has taken place. When that photo was taken, our Earth was a life support system for about four billion people. Today, within just one generation, that same Earth supports almost seven billion. By 2050, that number is expected to grow to about nine billion. How will we manage this planet? How will we find the water that we need to quench the thirst of nine billion people? How will we protect them from natural disasters, from floods, from droughts, from hurricanes. How will we feed them? We have no shortage of geographic data these days. We have agricultural data, stream data, forestry data, data from satellites and ground sensors, data from property surveys and the Census Bureau. In fact, 27 federal agencies produce geospatial data. We could very well drown in data. Today we're developing the systems and software to make sense of it all. 
I saw firsthand what this can mean in the lives of our citizens last fall when fires driven by the Santa Ana winds devastated Southern California. The fires displaced close to one million Americans and destroyed thousands of homes, a tragedy for so many people. The disaster might have been far worse, however, had it not been for the expertise of Department of the Interior employees working hand in hand with other federal agencies, state and communities. Experts at the National Interagency Fire Center in Boise, Idaho, integrated U.S. Geological Survey mapping data with data from state and federal agencies dealing with weather, forest conditions, and other factors to predict that Santa Ana winds would potentially produce catastrophic fires. As a result, we were able to pre-position our firefighters and resources. We significantly enhanced the ability of federal and state firefighters to combat the devastating fires that flared up only days later. In the aftermath of the fires, communities in Southern California face a new threat, mudslides. As a result, we're undertaking an extensive program to map and to monitor these fire damaged areas. We'll work jointly with the National Weather Service and the State of California to warn citizens if dangerous conditions arise that could lead to mudslides. I was amazed by the computerized three-dimensional images of the debris fields on California hillsides scientists were able to create using advanced technology. They even made a three-dimensional image of me standing on the hillside. Maybe they thought of me as part of the debris. These images will allow experts to determine when the volume of debris has reached the point where a mudslide is likely and alert local officials. In short, we're using geospatial technology to save lives and protect communities. This is the opportunity that stands before us as federal employees. The decisions we make affect the lives of every American every day. If we use geospatial technology to make better decisions, we can help people here and around the world live healthier and more prosperous lives while conserving our precious planet and its resources. John Wesley Powell started this journey. I'm confident this conference will be an important step along the path. In a moment, my Associate Deputy Secretary Jim Kaysen will brief you on the specifics of what we're doing at the Department of the Interior and especially our efforts to promote interagency cooperation. Working together, I am confident we can complete the journey.